Hello everyone, my name is Raj. Welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to take a look at how to animate the virtual screen that we created in our previous tutorial. So if you have not checked it out, you can check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you need the FBX file of this screen, you can find the link in the description as well. So in this tutorial, what we are going to do is we are going to animate the screen using the sequencer and also the actions from reality hub so we are going to talk about two different ways of animating it so this is part one in part two we will be talking about how to animate the same thing but using blueprints so without much talking let's get into the tutorial i have the screen over here what i will do is i will go up to cinematics and add level sequence i will save this I will call this screen underscore sequence seq and save it so if you see it has it's over here this is the sequence it's over here i'll keep it to the side i will select the screen from here and i'm going to drag it all the way down here to the sequencer and from the track i'm going to add a track and a transform track I'm at 30 FPS, which is correct. If you are working on some other FPS, you can select it from here. So at 00, I'm going to open the transform location and I'm going to set a keyframe from these for the Z axis. So I'll set a keyframe over here. And then maybe I'll go up to two seconds, which is around 60 and set another keyframe. So nothing happens right now because it is in the same place. So at 00, what I'm going to do is just drop this like this and set a keyframe. And now I have the animation like this. And what I need to do is I need to right click on this track, go to properties, and when finished, it should be kept on keep state. What this will do is once the animation is played it will keep the final keyframe as its resting point one thing that i need to do is i also need to set the timeline to 60 frames or say 61 frames so what i will do is i will bring this end point over and i will just bring it to 61 i will save this and that's it i don't have to do anything now i am going to hit play and let me go to reality hub you can see that i have the led screen node from the previous tutorial uh, but i cannot see the animation that i made just now in sequencer the way to see this animation is i have to right click and go up to level sequences and select the screen sequence and now i have this sequence in my r graph all i have to do is go to functions and click play or reverse and play okay it is as easy as that the only drawback in this method is that if for some reason you want to move the screen to the left to the right somewhere else you will not be able to do it let me show you if i select my led screen and say if i move this screen somewhere else like this once i come back to my sequence and play it will play at the same place where we had set the keyframe in the sequencer. So if you need to move the screen, you have to go back to your editor, stop it, and then change the keyframes accordingly. So this is one drawback, but if you know that your screen will be in the same place, it won't be moving, then this is a good method. Now let's take a look at the second method, which is the actions method, okay? Let's do one thing now. Let's delete the sequencer animation i'm going to find this in the browser i will delete the sequencer from here and then i'm going to delete it from the content browser as well now i don't have any animation on this we are going to add animation to this from the actions in reality hub so let's hit play and go to reality hub here is the screen let me make this a bit bigger okay now you can see here below there is actions so i will click on the actions and i will click on new action and i can double click here and give it a name screen up 
I will select the screen itself and in the transform in this circle I will left click and I will select timeline and now the transformation has been added to the timeline here on the actions. I will do the same thing. I will add a keyframe first here, add a keyframe and then maybe move up to two seconds and add another keyframe. Now the value is the same in both. So I will go to the first keyframe. I will select it and I will drag it all the way down like this. Some more maybe. Okay. This is fine. And now I have the value has been set already or it, just to be safe. I will just say add keyframe. So at the beginning, the Z axis is set to minus 222. And the last keyframe it is set to 13. Now if I drag this, nothing is going to happen because you have to hit play. But you can see what, what happened. It's jumping to, to the keyframe. We don't want that. We want a smooth transition from the first keyframe to the second keyframe. So what I will do is I will select the last keyframe and from here where it says jump, you can select any of these. I'm going to select linear. And now if I hit play, it will play smoothly. And of course, like if you drag this, you won't see the animation. You always have to hit play. And now I'm going to save this action. Now, in order to do a reverse of this, we need to make another action. Okay. Let me click on this plus this new action. Click. Double click to rename. Screen down. I will do the same thing as before. Select the node of the screen. Click on the circle of this transform. And timeline. Now I will set a keyframe here at zero and at two seconds, I'm going to set another keyframe and this time I'm going to select the last keyframe and I'm going to drag it down like this. And just to be safe, add keyframe. Now if I hit play, the same thing will happen. It will just jump to the keyframe. I don't want that. I will select this last keyframe and I will select linear and save it so now we have two actions one is screen up and screen down let me play the screen up here it is and let me go to screen down works perfectly fine and of course we need to give the control of these two actions to our operator so for that we are going to use the form builder so i'm going to open up the form builder like this from the side and I'm going to create a new form. Double click and I will give this a name. Screen. And all I have to do is come here to the actions and from the screen up, I will take this play and just drag it like this over here and do the same thing with the screen down action. I will take the this play button and left click, drag and drop like this. And I will save this. And now if I come to my playout tab, you can see that in the templates, I have the screen and I have these two buttons. Now the operator can easily do a screen up and screen down. In a situation like this, if you want to move the screen somewhere else, you can just add the keyframes over here and here. Previously in the sequencer, you would have to stop it and open the editor and go to the sequencer. But now you can just change the keyframes over here, which is much more faster. So this is how you animate the virtual screens using the sequencer and the action. Now it's up to you which method you like. In the second part of this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how to animate the screen using blueprints. Till then, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed and I will see you in the next one.